Let's take you through the sketch steps for two different energy conservation problems, one in which mechanical energy is conserved, one in which mechanical energy is not conserved. So in this one, we have two masses connected by a spring that are in the, under the influence of gravity, but are also traveling with their own velocities. Don't worry, this is a bit more complicated than what we normally do in this class, but just to show you what's going on with it. We're also going to state that the spring is initially at its natural length. We're also going to say that right mass 2 is at rest in the final state. So we're given all of this, but next to do is to draw an interaction diagram. So our interaction diagram is going to look like mass 1, mass 2, and our last object that is interacting with them is the Earth. We can feel pretty good that there's nothing else in contact with one or two except with each other. So they're interacting through a spring. So we can put F spring here. One and the Earth are interacting with gravity. So we can do FG1. And two and the Earth are interacting through gravity. So we can do FG2. Now that we have that, we want to choose our system, which objects are going to be in our system. Since we want to track the motion of both 1 and 2, we're going to have a system containing both 1 and 2. Once we've done this, this means that we need to be tracking the kinetic energy of both 1 and 2. So we're going to start by saying K1i plus K2i. So these are both of our kinetic energies. Then we're going to add up all of the forces, all the interactions between and within our system. So any interactions that span the system, any interactions that are within the system. Note that we're talking about interactions, not forces. So because we have this one spring interaction, we're not doing the force of one on two and two on one. We're just doing one spring interaction. So we'll do U spring initial. And then we've got the potential energy for gravity one initial, potential energy for gravity 2, initial. And then we have those final states at the end. So we have K1F plus K2F plus U spring final plus gravity for 1 final plus gravity for 2 final. And we're doing this just to help organize and understand how many different terms we have. Make sure that we have the same number of terms on each side. And then we can draw bar charts to help us understand right, what concepts are zero, what concepts are non-zero. Since object one has an initial velocity, we give it some amount of bar chart. Two has some velocity, we give it some amount of bar chart. The spring is initially at its natural length, so we give it zero. And mass one is above the floor, so we'll give it some initial gravitational potential energy, two also above the floor, so we'll give it some gravitational potential energy. As these two are going up, we expect them to slow down. In fact, we're told that mass two is at zero, and mass one probably much, much less. Our spring is either going to be condensed or expanded based on what's going to happen. We don't think it's going to be at its natural length, so we're going to have to put something for this. And then as they're going up, we're going to say that, right, these two potential energies are probably going to be a little bit higher. If everything was perfect, these four bars would equal these four bars. Very, very rarely happens. What really what we want to know is, right, what's zero, what's not zero. If we can have them kind of equal each other, if we know values at this point, so much the better. So that's how we would set up all of our sketch step for this one. For this one, now we have just our box. And what's interacting with the box? Well, the gravity from Earth is interacting with it. The floor is interacting with it. And the hand is interacting with it. So the forces that we have are the applied force from the hand we have force of gravity from the Earth. We have the normal force from the floor. And we're told a coefficient of friction. 
So we're going to have to have a friction force from the floor as well. Now, for this system, we don't want to include the hand because we don't know what's interacting with the hand too far out. We don't want to include all the things interacting with the earth. We don't know what else is interacting with the floor. So our system really has to be this box and just this box. If we have just this box, then we have a couple of forces that don't conserve mechanical energy. The force applied in friction, both don't supply mechanical energy, don't conserve mechanical energy. Earth with gravity does conserve mechanical energy. The normal force has no work, so it conserves mechanical energy. It's a trivial case of zero. So in this case, then, we only really have, right, a couple of different things to track. So we have the kinetic energy of the box plus the potential for gravity initial plus then any sort of external works we put on the left-hand side, so we say work external. And then we have the kinetic energy of the box final plus the potential for gravity final. And then we also then say that the friction, what it does is it changes the thermal energy of the system. So for this, our box we can nicely set on the floor, have it be zero and zero. It's starting at some velocity, so we have to keep it going with some velocity. And then we're going to be told something about the external work or the change in thermal energy. Maybe it's such that we push it, but not enough, and it slows down. So we have something like this. And then the thermal energy gets larger or something of that sort. We don't really want to do either of these problems in class. That's why we're doing them for these visualization steps. But this is how we do it, right? If we have external works and thermal energies, this is how we do it if we have multiple objects in our systems and a number of forces that we have to deal with.